SpaceX has been in headlines for testing a brand new Starship launch pad with rocket fire. SpaceX has also recently aborted the launch of a Falcon 9 rocket carrying crucial satellites for OneWeb and Iridium. There is also news of SpaceX launching 22 next-generation Starlink satellites into the vast expanse of space on Friday morning. What could have caused the launch aboard a Falcon 9 rocket? And will SpaceX's new launch pad prove to be a game-changer? Dive into this video to find out. SpaceX is already testing tech that could strengthen the ground beneath its giant Starship rocket's orbital launch pad, a new video shows. In a appealing video shared by SpaceX on Friday, the footage showcases the intense rage of the plasma beam generated by the engine. Yet remarkably, as the steam disappears, the steel plate remains unharmed, which is a evidence to its strength and showcases the ability of SpaceX's engineering team. Elon Musk, in his charismatic style, responded to the video with an exclamation of one hell of a plasma beam. These words only serve to further ignite the enthusiasm surrounding SpaceX's ambitious project. Situated within SpaceX's Starbase facility in South Texas, this launch pad underwent a tremendous assault during the inaugural test flight of a fully assembled Starship vehicle on April 20th. Witnessing the immense power generated by Starship's 33 first-stage Raptor engines was a sight to watch. As the rocket ignited, a catastrophic eruption rocked the launch pad, creating a profound pocket beneath it and launching fragments of shattered concrete into the air. The magnitude of this event served as evidence to the massive force harnessed by the Starship rocket. A day after the highly anticipated test flight, Elon Musk tweeted that SpaceX was already working on a way to prevent or minimize such damage a massive water-cooled steel plate to go under the launch mount. Such efforts had begun three months prior, the billionaire entrepreneur said. The plate system wasn't ready in time for the April 20th launch, but SpaceX went ahead with it anyway, assuming that the concrete beneath Starship would survive a single liftoff. That turned out not to be the case, as we saw on April 20th, Although the steel plate system was not yet operational during the April 20th launch, SpaceX proceeded with the mission, relying on the assumption that the concrete foundation beneath the Starship would withstand the incredible forces exerted during liftoff. Unfortunately, that assumption proved to be misplaced as the launch pad suffered notable damage. However, this setback only fueled SpaceX's determination to perfect their new solution. In the wake of the initial test flight, SpaceX boosted its efforts, relentlessly pursuing the development of the steel plate system. Recent developments indicate that significant progress has been made, that a prototype plate undergoing a trial against the dreadful power of a single Raptor engine. At its core, SpaceX's development of the Starship and its commitment to strengthening the launch pad aim to revolutionize space exploration. The ultimate goal is to transport astronauts to celestial bodies like the Moon and Mars for a future where SpaceX dominates the spaceflight industry. NASA, recognizing the remarkable potential of the Starship, has already chosen it as the primary crewed lunar lander for their Artemis moon program. Up next, SpaceX aborts Falcon 9 rocket launch for OneWeb. Iridium on Friday morning, SpaceX was forced to abort the highly anticipated launch of a Falcon 9 rocket carrying crucial satellites for OneWeb and Iridium. Just a mere 55 seconds before liftoff, the launch was suddenly called off. SpaceX promptly took to Twitter to announce the disappointment, stating, Standing down from today's launch of the Iridium OneWeb mission, the Falcon 9 rocket, prepared and loaded with a payload of 21 satellites, was scheduled to lift off from the Vandenberg Space Force Base in California, aiming to reach the stars at 9.19 a.m., this mission was no ordinary feat for the Falcon 9 rocket, as it marked the 11th launch and landing for this particular booster, a testimony to SpaceX's remarkable reusability achievements. The first stage of the rocket, after propelling the upper stage and satellites toward orbit, was expected to gracefully return to Earth. Nine minutes after liftoff, it was destined to make a controlled descent and land on the SpaceX drone ship named Of Course I Still Love You, patiently awaiting its arrival in the vast expanse of the Pacific Ocean. The upper stage of the Falcon 9, carrying the payload of satellites, would have continued its ascent to low Earth orbit. Among the collection of satellites were 16 dedicated to OneWeb and 5 to Iridium. OneWeb's satellites played a crucial role in expanding their broadband constellation in low Earth orbit, with 15 of them aiding in this ambitious venture. The remaining satellite, known as JoeySat, served as a technology demonstrator, showcasing cutting-edge features such as a digitally regenerative payload and multi-beam electronically steered phased array antennas, as detailed in OneWeb's mission description. The partnership between SpaceX and OneWeb has already proven fruitful, with SpaceX successfully launching three previous batches of OneWeb Internet satellites totaling an impressive 40 spacecraft deployed on each mission. 
This collaboration has propelled OneWeb's vision of global connectivity and internet accessibility to new heights. On the other hand, the five Iridium satellites on board the Falcon 9 were not meant to expand the company's existing telecom satellite network, which already boasted 66 operational satellites along with nine spares in orbit. Instead, these additional satellites served as backups, reinforcing the validity of Iridium's constellation. Our constellation is incredibly healthy. However, the spare satellites have no utility to us on the ground. Iridium CEO Matt Desch said in a statement in September 2022 when this SpaceX launch was announced. Reflecting on the collaborative efforts, Iridium CEO Matt Desch also expressed confidence in SpaceX's track record, stating, We built extra satellites as an insurance policy, and with SpaceX's stellar track record, we look forward to another successful launch which will position us even better to replicate the longevity of our first constellation. This rapid succession of launches showcased the constant pace of SpaceX's ventures pushing the boundaries of space exploration and technological advancement. Up next, SpaceX launches 22 next-gen Starlink satellites to orbit. In the early hours of Friday morning, SpaceX made another leap forward in its mission to revolutionize global internet connectivity. At precisely 2.19 a.m., a Falcon 9 rocket took off from the Cape Canaveral Space Force Station in Florida, carrying a payload of 22 cutting-edge Starlink satellites. The Falcon 9's initial stage performed flawlessly, propelling the rocket into the heavens with immense power. As the rocket ascended, its engines roared, defying Earth's gravity. But what truly set this launch apart was the return of the rocket's first stage, a feat that has become identical with SpaceX's pioneering efforts. Approximately 8.5 minutes after liftoff, the Falcon 9's first stage gracefully descended back to Earth. It aimed for a landing platform stationed in the vast Atlantic Ocean. The SpaceX drone ship, duly named a shortfall of Gravitas, awaited the rocket's arrival, bracing against the rolling waves. With pinpoint accuracy, the booster touched down, finally conquering the challenges of reusability. This was a moment of celebration for SpaceX, as the returning first stage marked its fifth launch and landing. Each successful recovery is a testimony to the company's commitment to advancing space technology and reducing the cost of access to space. The ability to reuse rockets is a game-changer, enabling more frequent and affordable launches and bringing us closer to a future where space exploration becomes a routine affair. Meanwhile, as the first stage made its triumphant return, the upper stage of the Falcon 9 continued its journey, ferrying the 22 Starlink satellites to their intended destination. These satellites, known as V2 Minis, represent the next generation of SpaceX's ambitious broadband constellation. They are larger and more capable than their predecessors, designed to enhance the performance and efficiency of the ever-expanding Starlink network. To date, SpaceX has launched over 4,400 Starlink satellites, with the ultimate goal of deploying nearly 10 times that number, subject to regulatory approvals. The sheer scale of this undertaking is mind-boggling, with SpaceX pushing the boundaries of what was once deemed possible. Their vision of a global mesh of interconnected satellites Blanketing the Earth and bridging the digital divide is rapidly becoming a reality. This launch was the 30th Falcon 9 flight of the year. It marked the 32nd orbital mission for the company in 2023, an impressive feat by any measure. Elon Musk's brainchild has also made waves with its powerful Falcon Heavy rocket, launching it twice this year and demonstrating the prowess of its engineering prowess. In contrast, while the Falcon 9 rocket of OneWeb and Iridium faced an abort, the second Falcon rocket managed to accomplish its mission during this doubleheader event. In the next update, NASA awarded $3.40 billion for Blue Origin's Lunar Lander. In a stunning breakthrough for Jeff Bezos' Blue Origin, the company has been awarded a coveted $3.4 billion contract by NASA to construct a spacecraft for lunar missions, marking a major milestone for the company after losing out to Elon Musk's SpaceX in a previous competition. The announcement has sent shockwaves through the space industry. Blue Origin, led by Bezos, has ambitious plans to build a 52-foot-tall Blue Moon Lander in collaboration with industry giants Lockheed Martin, Boeing, software firm Draper, and robotics firm Astrobotic. This partnership represents a formidable force of space exploration, combining expertise and resources from various sectors to achieve extraordinary feats. The spacecraft's crew compartment, capable of supporting four astronauts for up to 30 days, will sit atop four landing legs and rocket motors. A short stairway will provide easy access to the surface. A squat liquid oxygen tank and larger hydrogen tank will be positioned atop the crew cabin, along with radio 
radiator panels and solar arrays. A port on the side of the crew compartment will enable rovers to dock with the lander, allowing astronauts to move from one vehicle to another without having to first venture outside. The Blue Moon architecture calls for a new Glenn rocket to launch the lander into the elliptical near-rectilinear halo orbit, or NRHO, that NASA is using for its planned Gateway Lunar Space Station. NASA's decision to choose Blue Origin over rival bids, including one led by Lido's own defense contractor Dynetics that also included Northrop Grumman, signals the space agency's intent to create a competitive landscape for lunar missions. By awarding contracts to multiple companies, NASA aims to foster innovation, reliability, and backups in its Artemis program, which is focused on establishing a sustainable presence on the moon. I've said it before, we want more competition. We want two landers, and that's better, expressed NASA Administrator Bill Nelson during the contract announcement. The decision not only allows for increased reliability, but also ensures that NASA has alternative options in case of unforeseen circumstances. Under the Artemis program, SpaceX's Starship lander is poised to lead the way with the first two astronaut moon landings. This revolutionary spacecraft is designed to transport humans to and from the lunar surface, reviving the spirit of Apollo-era missions. Blue Origin's lander is set to follow suit, with a similar mission planned for 2029. Both missions will see two astronauts stepping foot on the moon, furthering human exploration and expanding our understanding of our celestial neighbor. The contract follows NASA's trend in recent years in which it helps fund development of private astronaut spacecraft, then pays to use the craft in missions rather than spending more to own the vehicle entirely. Blue Origin, founded in 2000, is investing well north of the $3.4 billion figure to develop the spacecraft, the company's lunar lander chief John Kaluris told reporters at the event. Kaluris said that Blue Origin, not NASA, would pay for any cost overruns. NASA said in a contract document that it picked Blue Origin's proposal for its lower price, extra lander capabilities, and a plan to execute two test landing missions on the moon in 2024 and 2025 at the company's expense. But NASA expressed concern about numerous conflicts and emissions in Blue Origin's proposed schedule and development deadlines. The Dynetics-led bid raised NASA concerns over whether it met technical requirements, and the price was substantially higher. The contract document said. The Artemis program envisions building a long-term presence on the moon. This Blue Moon lander architecture calls for a new Glenn rocket to launch the lander into the elliptical, near-rectilinear halo orbit, or NRHO, that NASA is using for its planned Gateway Lunar Space Station. The Blue Moon lander can be configured in two versions. The first is a crew configuration that will be able to land four astronauts anywhere on the surface of the moon, day or night, Kaluris said. That will be the first mission that we fly as part of Artemis V. This vehicle also can be configured for a cargo landing mission able to carry up to 20 metric tons in a round trip, or 30 metric tons to the surface to form the foundation of habitats and other permanent infrastructure. In between surface, the lander can simply remain in the near-rectilinear halo orbit at or near Gateway, while awaiting follow-on missions. Bezos and Kalura said Blue Origin is already working on technologies enabling long-term storage of the ultra-cold liquid oxygen and hydrogen propellant. Having two independent landers from different providers, NASA said in a statement, will increase competition, reduce costs to taxpayers, support a regular cadence of lunar landings, further invest in the lunar economy, and help NASA achieve its goals on and around the moon in preparation for future astronaut missions to Mars. The announcement of Blue Origin's NASA contract is the realization of a long-awaited dream for Jeff Bezos, who has poured billions of dollars into Blue Origin to compete with the formidable force of SpaceX. While SpaceX has dominated the industry with its satellite launches and human spaceflight endeavors. Blue Origin's success in securing this contract demonstrates its growing influence and capabilities. Previously, Blue Origin, along with Dynetics, lost to SpaceX in a competition held by NASA in 2021, with budget constraints cited as the primary reason for choosing only one company. Despite the setback, Blue Origin fought to challenge NASA's decision, first through a watchdog agency and then in court. Bezos and U.S. lawmakers tirelessly advocated for the acquisition of a second lander, urging NASA to embrace diversity and expand its options. As part of NASA's multi-spacecraft plan for the initial Artemis moon missions, astronauts will be launched toward the moon aboard NASA's Space Launch System rocket and the Lockheed-built Orion capsule. The Orion capsule will dock with SpaceX's Starship lunar lander in space, which will then complete the journey to the moon's surface. Similarly, for Blue Origin's mission, 
the Orion capsule, and Blue Moon lander will dock with a planned space station orbiting the moon, allowing the astronauts to transfer between the vehicles before descending to the lunar surface. Today's news concludes with that being all. Will the new launch pad be a sign of the latest development for SpaceX as they continue to work on Starship? And when will the Falcon 9 rocket launch for OneWeb and Iridium? Share your views in the comments section below. And if you want to see more interesting videos, don't forget to subscribe with all notifications enabled so you don't miss out on the latest news on space.